Pascal Siakam should have been named an all-star, OG Ananobi looks like the most underrated wing across the NBA, and those are just two of an incredible six Toronto rotation players with a wingspan stretching out to at least seven foot two. Since December 31st, the Raptors are fourth in league-wide win percentage, only behind the Mavericks, Grizzlies, and Suns, teams that deserve some respect as well. But since they're now on a seven-game winning streak, here's how the Toronto Raptors are lethal and why it's becoming obvious. Plus, stick around to see if fans in the six could witness yet another monumental playoff run in 2022. Right quick, only 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. Since the Raps lost literally everyone on their roster because of the Sniffles variant and started 14-17, and 17, the squad slowly but surely got all their pieces back intact and have won 16 of their last 22 games ever since then. They've been top 10 in both offensive and defensive rating over that span, but it's the convincing fashion in which they've been able to take care of their opponents on a game-to-game -game basis that's worked perfectly in the wing-slash-guard-heavy modern NBA. We went heavily in depth on the likes of Freddie V and Trent Jr. in this video right here, which you can go watch after this. Having said that, whether it's Spicy, Boosh, Precious, OG, or Scotty, don't forget to give some credit to Toronto's big men slash wings for their turnaround as well. Each are mercilessly outworking their matchups, leading to a hefty amount of extra possessions for Toronto. On the season, the Raps rank second among all teams in offensive rebounds per game, as the ball swings around on this possession, key in on how Miles Bridges does his best to put a body on Siakam, but as Spicy displays, that's not as easy as it was in prior years. Man's added some muscle. Siakam sweeps through Miles, perfectly times his jump for the O board, and finishes the putback with his offhand. Given the Raps are now ahead of the Brooklyn Nets for the number six seed out east, if the season ended today, they'd have a playoff series lined up with the number three seed. While Fred's carrying the load as the number one guy right now, once the playoffs hit and the pressure ramps up, given Pascal's size and guard-like abilities that can get him buckets at will when he finds the right focus and brings the proper energy, that number one role could be placed on his back at some point. The improvement of Pascal's passing in terms of how he's getting into the lane, not panicking like he may have in prior years and fluently finding a teammate, bodes well for Toronto's offensive rhythm. We saw how the Cavaliers dominated the NBA for so many years with a point forward who could drive to the hoop at will while being able to facilitate, and Siakam becoming an even better passer may be the key to fully unlocking his upside. In terms of his scoring, it's plays like the one on your screen that display Siakam's become a different type of scoring threat as of late. Right here, Pascal bodies PJ Washington off the block, getting P.J. thinking drop step before pivoting and hitting a one-legged Dirk-esque fadeaway. His very next trip down, Pascal attacks the bucket off the dribble. Back-to-back -back dominant plays that even if you game plan for, you can't even think about stopping. Those plays signify Siakam's recently refound comfortability in his game that we all became accustomed to seeing when he was named an All-Star in 2020 and when he was the second option on a championship team a year earlier. Coming into the game against Oklahoma City in four games so far during the month of February, Siakam's posting 25 points, 12 boards, 6 dimes, and 1.3 steals, making over half of his shot attempts from both the field and from three-point range. Also, the Raptors are 14-1 over their last 15 games when Siakam makes at least one three-pointer. Pretty crazy. Another ferocious O-rebounder in Chris Boucher owns the furthest stretching wingspan on the team with a reach of a beastly 7'4". That not only allows Boucher to protect the paint at a high level, but with his length plus his defensive instincts, that's led him to a steal per game tally in February so far. In a limited 20 minutes, the extreme hustle, locked in mentality, and unstoppably high release point on his three point trigger is allowing Chris to average nine points, six rebounds, and 1.1 blocks on the season. While that's an impressive stat line given his limited playing time, the Canadian is much more than his numbers. From an opponent's perspective, Boucher's a constant problem to hold off the glass with his elusive cuts to the basket like this one right here, 
that keep defensive game plans off balance. To be fair, Lou Will is out of his league here, but any defender has to account for Boucher's well-known three-point stroke, so timely backdoor cuts have a way of mixing up Toronto's attack. He made a lot of young player mistakes in prior years, but in terms of his IQ and decision making on both ends of the floor, there has evidently been massive development with Chris Boucher. Precious Achua is a player who a lot of Raps fans wanted to move on from at the deadline. I even suggested some trades that he could be involved in, I'm not going to lie. Trades that could maybe bring in a bench score. And while the Raptors' limited scoring off the pine was exemplified by them becoming the only team in NBA history to have all five starters rack up at least 50 minutes in a game, the young Miami Heat number 10 overall pick from 2020 just has too much upside to give up on. The bulkiness and reach of an old school five man, Precious has some playmaking chops to go along with lateral quickness, elite springiness, and a guard-esque off the dribble shot creating bag. The product of the University of Memphis is still 22 years old and Raps Nation has to give him some time to morph into the innovative center he could potentially become. Fred Van Vliet's an all-star, Pascal Siakam's the player of the week. And more importantly, the Toronto Raptors have won seven straight games, all against solid Eastern Conference competition to move them into sole possession of sixth place in the East with a 30-23 record. Of course, the job is far from done, there are still 29 games to go, but it's worth pausing for a moment to reflect on all the things that went wrong for this team and consider how impressive it is that they are where they are. After last year's debacle in Tampa, losing Kyle in free agency, a slow start to the year, and another COVID outbreak, 30-23 and 23 isn't just good, it's absolutely outstanding. There aren't supposed to be many stretches of four games in five nights anymore, but postponements had the Raptors playing four and five last week. While they continued to play a short rotation, they won all four, which at the time extended their winning streak to five straight. That included three victories over the first and second place teams in the East in the Chicago Bulls and Miami Heat, and two over the Hawks, who were otherwise eight and one over their last three weeks. The Raptors rank sixth defensively over that winning streak, even though those five games have come against opponents that all rank in the top seven on offense. All five games were within five points in the last five minutes, and the Raptors' defense allowed those offenses to score just 64 points on 72 clutch possessions. OG Ananobi shot nine for 15, including four for five from three-point range on clutch shots, and Scotty Barnes had big second chance buckets against both Miami and Chicago. Freddie All-Star leads the NBA with 16 clutch three-pointers, with the last three of those having come in overtime in the first game of the winning streak nine days ago. He's 16 for 35, which is 46% on clutch threes, and somehow just four for 24 on clutch twos, which is just 17%. Whether it's Scotty, OG, Spicy, Boosh, or Precious, who's the most intriguing Raptor phenom? Two shoutouts next video from my last video in this one, but leave your take down below in the comments section. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.